Hi, it's Rob from the Russian Balkan. Today's tutorial is going to be how to paint the Emperor's Champion. If you'd like to support the channel, our Coffee and Patreon page is linked below. Now on to the video. So the first colour we're going to use is Citadel Iron Hand Steel. Citadel Ledge Belcher or anything along those lines will work fine as well. I've been working on the image of this miniature from the Games Workshop site to sort of try and match those colours. The only difference is really the sword, which I'm having a little bit of a play about with in this video to see what I prefer it to look like. So I've gone with the Iron Hand Steel on the blade side. Next we're going to use Citadel Retributor Armour to pick out some of those details and also to colour in some of the sections like the lore around his head there. You've got little parts on the sword. The little Aquila icon from the rosaries in his hand. There's also the skull and some bones on each shoulder pad as well. We're going to do them in the Retributor armour too. Like so. Next up, Citadel Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to use this to do his belt and his pouches. I really like this colour, I've been playing around with it quite a lot to do different contrast paints over the top of it and the colours that it goes. You'll see that here as well, the rosaries in his hand there. There's like little round beads which are painted with iron hands steel and then the little sort of square bits in between I paint with a bit of Bane Blade Brown. I'm not going to use Citadel Rakarth Flesh to do the tabard. So the Bane Blade Brown on the rosaries, I'm then going to use a little bit of Shaiish Purple Contrast on that later on and give that a nice kind of deep purple colour and just give it a couple of highlights and then once finished we'll be doing that in gloss varnish, the Citadel Ard Coat. Now Citadel and the fist on red, I'm going to use this to do his eye lenses and the little parchmenty things hanging off the back. I'm going to do a start to finish video on them because they do look quite cool in red so it will make a bit of a change for different chapters I think to have the odd red kind of oath on there. like so. Now a little bit of Citadel Corn Red, using this to do the grip on his sword. And what you won't notice until later on when a painter is there's a little band in the middle there that's going to be silver, it sticks out slightly more than the rest and is slightly thinner. And then you've got a few more Corn Red bits above it, which I haven't coloured in yet, I coloured them quite close to the end. So you do all of the grip with the Corn Red and that little band in the middle with the iron hand steel. Now we're using Vallejo White, and this is just to paint up a few little bits. You have the main areas of the pauldron, the top of that little shield on his chest, and also I'll be doing the little kind of windows on that icon or whatever it is hanging down on the front of him. Looks like a little lamp, but I won't be doing that until a little bit later on. So now we're going to use Citadel Null Oil to do all of the silvery metallics. So anything that you've done in iron hand steel, just slap that Null Oil on. Be working on the sword separately, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you want to, you can Null Oil the shield now. But you will be doing it a bit later on once you've added another colour, so probably would leave that until later. Next colour is Citadel Snakebite Leather Contrast. I'm going to use this to paint over the Bane Blade Brown on his belt and his pouches. 
failed to mention those little straps that he's got on his armour as well. Like little buckles as though he's having to strap his armour on piece by piece. Can't help but wonder whether that'd form a good seal once it's tightened or not. Next up, a little bit of Citadel Shaiish Purple. Going to use this on the little parts of the rosary where we used the Bane Blade Brown earlier. Now Citadel Drucci Violet, we're going to use this on the lower half of that little shield, on his eye lenses, and also on the grip of the sword. Now we have a little bit of Citadel Carrowberg Crimson, we're going to use this to do the ribbons or the oaths or parchments or whatever they are hanging from the back there. This will darken them down nicely, and then once we start adding the colour back to them, that will make them look pretty nice. Next up, Citadel Seraphim Sepia. We use this to do the tabard on the front here and round the back. Now we're going to use Citadel Apothecary White. We're going to use this to do all of the areas we painted with the Vallejo White before. It's got both pauldrons and a bit on the top of that shield. Next up, Citadel Agrax Earthshade. We're going to use this to do all of the sections that we've done with gold, the Retributor armour. Going to start working on the tabard now using Citadel Rakarth Flesh. Going to reapply the colour, but you're going to be leaving the shade in the recesses. Also, you don't want the colour going all the way down and underneath. You want to leave some of those areas where it curls under itself shaded with the Seraphim Sepia. You'd have a bit of natural shading on there, so you don't really want the full colours going all the way down. On the top here, start by colouring the top of the crests in the ridges and things like that and then spread it out from there part way down into the recesses. We're now going to add some Vallejo white to the Rakarth flesh and we're going to start highlighting the tabards. So you want to be leaving some of the Rakarth flesh on show underneath this layer so you'll have the shaded sepia layer, the Rakarth flesh layer and then you'll have this highlight layer. I'll give you a nice three colour shade so far. You can see all those details coming out on the cloth, even though there isn't really that much detail on it. You can see those little recesses and concave sections. We're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix, and we're going to do exactly the same as we've just done, but on a thinner scale. So we're just doing another final little highlight on each of these sections of the tabard. Add a little tiny bit more white to the previous mix and just do one final little highlight, mainly doing edges and very, very thin lines. I'm 
this will be the final highlight that we do on this cloth. This one's just mainly to brighten it up and give it that final near white layer. Like so. Next up, we're going to use some Citadel and the Fist on red. We're going to use this to go onto the red parchment or kind of scrolls or ribbons on the back here. Also going to do his eye lenses and touch up the little shields and any little red details on there. So on here you want to be leaving some of the Caro Bird Crimson in the recesses. There will be a full start to finish tutorial on this one showing the complete process of doing it. It's a little bit different from the normal ones. I'm going to use some Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet and do about 50% of the area that we did with the Mephist on red. Adding that highlight to the ribbons or parchments. I'm just going to call them ribbons from now on, save repeating that every single time. So add the little bit of highlights to the ribbons. Thinking about where it's going to be catching the light if the light's coming down from above. So certain areas will be getting more because they're angled upwards. Other bits will be getting less because they're angled downwards. And obviously you've got the shade from stuff that's going on above them too. We're going to finish the highlights with a little bit of Citadel Wild Rider Red. Having to say it like that because I can't say it quickly. This is going to be the final highlight, so it's mainly like edge highlights and little details or little ridges. Things like that. Now I'm going to add all the little text details with a little bit of Vallejo white. So here I'm using an Army Painter Insane Detail Brush, or equivalent of. It's like an unbranded one, but it's exactly the same as the Army Painter Insane Detail Brush. We're just doing a few little squares where we're going to be making that into little Templars badges. You can do the odd kind of long triangle or round balls, so you've got the equilibrium of the long triangles, little round balls as like skulls. I'm going to use a tiny little black to paint a black square on the inside of each of those white squares that we've done. This is the easiest way I've found of doing Templar symbols on such a small scale. Then all we do with the white is do a little X across the black square. When you do that X across the black square, you then put a little blob of black back in the middle and you'll have those four lines going into the center. Next, we're gonna be working on the white. This is for the little topper shield here. You wanna leave some of that apothecary white on there so it's not 100% white. It's got that gray tarnished look to it. And then the same for the pauldrons. You wanna get that white on so it's smooth near the top. And very pure white and then the bits where it's angled and not going to be catching that much light you want to leave a little bit more of the apothecary white showing so you get that darker still still bright ish but that darker gray kind of shaded area on the pauldrons now we're going to use citadel corn red and we're going to start working on the hilt of the sword or the grip of the sword rather so we're going to do these bands all with the corn red Again, the sum above his hand as well, which I've missed at this point. I'll fill them in a little bit later. We're then going to use Citadel Wasdaka Red and do about 50% of those bands. The top 50% that is. Of those bands like so. So you've got the Corn Red and the Wasdaka Red on show there. And then finally for the grip, we're going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Pink Horror. And we're going to do a thin edge highlight at the top of each section of that grip. Now you've got the three bits here and then above that, 
I realised there when I was doing that pink horror bit that there's a few little extra sections left. I'm now going to use some Wasdaka Red to do the eye lens. We replaced a little bit of Mephiston Red previously when we applied that back to the miniature. So just going to add a little bit of Wasdaka Red here. Then we're going to use a tiny little spot of Pink Horror just to do a highlight on the area that we put the Wasdaka Red on. Doing the highlights towards the front of the lens on this miniature. If you get it on the black of that kind of nose piece or the grill on the front of the visor there, then you can just paint that black back on, that'll be fine. Finally, we're going to use a little bit of white to do a final highlight on the Pink Horror and then a little spot towards the back where the light is catching on the dark area of the lens. Like so. Now I'm going to start working on the leather belt and the pouches using a little bit of Citadel Balor Brown. Here you want to be thinking about where it's going to be scuffed and well used and chafed on the belt and the pouches and just applying the Balor Brown to that. It acts as quite a good highlight because you use the contrast on the Bane Blade Brown so you have the shade in the recesses and the light coloured bits on the convex areas so you do have some highlights in there already so starting off with the Balor Brown as a highlight rather than reapplying a base colour works fine. So after you've done that we're going to add a little bit of Citadel Rackarth Flesh to the mix and we're going to start highlighting and touching up this belt making certain sections of it look a lot more worn like the edges where it's getting pulled through that buckle. Also on the pouches where they'd be getting scuffed in combat or against walls or anything like that you want to be chafing the edges of those so you use horizontal brush strokes on vertical sections of the miniature and vertical brush strokes on horizontal sections like edges on those pouches and that'll give you that rough scraped look to the leather. We're going to add a little bit more Rakarth flesh to the previous mix and then we're just going to highlight that one more time with this one being a lot more close to Rakarth flesh in colour it does give that scuffed leather final look to it. You can also add some little slices if you want to to it. it. Doesn't have to just be rough edges. You can do patches where it's scuffed or whatever you want to. Now we're going to work on the gold using Citadel Retributor Armour. So you want to be applying this back to the areas that we've previously done with the gold, leaving the Rakath uh, wrong, the Agrax Earth Shade in the recesses. So with the likes of the leaves on the laurel kind of thing that's going around the top of his head you've got some little creases in there where the leaves kind of go concave so you want to be doing almost like the edges and a few little bits on them where it'd be catching the light we're now going to use citadel liberator gold here to highlight the retributor armor so you're going to be thinking about where the light is going to be catching the gold more and applying it to those areas like so. The final highlight for the gold we're going to add some Vallejo Model Air Chrome to the Liberator Gold. If you don't have this you can use Citadel Stormhost Silver, that's a pretty close match. You'd probably have to use more Stormhost Silver though because it doesn't seem to be quite as pigmented as the Model Air Chrome is. But if you've got the Model Air Chrome or you haven't got it I'd recommend it because it's really really good paints over pretty much everything and when you mix it with the gold it does give you a really really nice highlight colour because it's very very shiny so you get it on those edges and it does look like it's catching the light. So back to the Iron Hand Steel, I'm going to start reapplying this colour to all the bits that we had it with earlier.
Be really careful with the little buckles on the side of the lower legs and also the ones on the side of the chest plate too. They are really, really thin sections there and it's very easy to just accidentally blob a little bit onto the leather strap that's going through them. I'm going to use Citadel Cassandora Yellow. You can see we've added some white to the inside sections on that little kind of lantern thing there. So we're just going to use Cassandora Yellow on this. If you get the basic yellow into the middle and then you add a little bit extra around the edges, you'll get a sort of faint orangey kind of effect on the edges. But we're going to use a little bit of Fugan Orange shortly once that's dried and add that to the edges. So while waiting for that to dry, we're going to work on the black armour. We're going to start with Vallejo Black to touch up all the areas that we've gone astray with the previous colours. Just reapply this so you've got that nice smooth black finish to all the armour and we can start with the highlights. So we're going to start using German Grey as the first highlight. Now the exposure has turned up quite high on this because it is a very dark colour. It's hard to see the effect of the highlight when it's just normal exposure. And that'll just help you to see the areas that I'm applying this colour to. So if you look down from above on the miniature, you want to be applying the German Grey to pretty much those areas that you can see. Adding a little bit more here and there just for effect. But you want to be leaving like the undersides of the legs and the arms and the power pack with just plain black so that you haven't got any highlights there. Then we're using a little bit of Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey to do edge highlights. So you want to think about where the light to be catching the edges of the armour plates and things like that and just add in the highlight to them. I do tend to do a little bit of highlighting sort of underneath the legs as well although it's just the plain black with none of the German grey on there. I do tend to do a little bit of highlighting there with the Mechanica standard grey just in the straight lines or any details just to get those to stand out so there's a little bit of light catching them. But this is where you make all the armour panels stand out. Okay, so working on the sword now, I've redone it so it's all completely black once more. We're going to use the Iron Hand Steel down the sides. Now I did have a good play about doing this because I couldn't decide on a way that I liked to do the sword. And this is the best way that I thought of. With it being sort of black and shades of grey on the actual model from Games Workshop. It looked a bit, well I didn't really like the look of it to be honest, it looked like it was sort of almost non-metallic metal but not quite up to, as though it hadn't quite been finished or something like that. Just using a little bit of Fugan Orange to do around the edges of each of those little panels there to give it that fiery glow from within. So I wasn't too impressed with the sword that they had on there. I was trying to think of a way that I could get it so it looked dark and it was very very black the sword to go with the stories with it that will go with its name and have the details show up and this is around the best way that I thought of. So using a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome here and what we're doing is we are picking out all of the studs on the armour, all of the rivets, you've got some on the pouches too on the power pack, you, you might want to go over the beads on the Rosary in his hand too. We're also going to lightly dry brush some of this down the writing on the sword. You can see that here. And that's just to get that to stand out a little bit. So you're dry brushing some of that model air chrome or storm host silver. Or if you've got it Necron compound, which is equally as good. Now all we're going to do is we're going to give a good wash of known oil to it and you can leave that to stand if you lie the miniature down and hold it up so that it's horizontal so that you don't get pooling of that null oil 
Otherwise, as happened with mine, it pooled at the very bottom of the sword, and I have to dry it off and very carefully touch it up so that you can't see a noticeable difference in the shade on it. So when you've reapplied that null oil to it, that will darken the blade down so it's very dark, whilst allowing you to see the metallics and the writing down the front. So now we're using a little bit of Citadel Mephist on red. We're just putting on the Templar's detail on the front of this shield. These little side pieces, the one on the right goes slightly wrong because it's not quite central, which is a bit frustrating, but you get the idea, that little triangle pointing up that way. You can touch it up with a little bit of white to make it the right shape that you want. I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black to draw the sword onto that. Very simple, you just want to go where the stud is at the bottom, above that, do a vertical line in black. Do a cross piece near the top, and then make the second part, the lower part, slightly wider than the top. Now I'm going to use some Vallejo White. I'm going to ever so gently just paint very faint lines of where we want the wreath kind of thing to go. See that left hand side is going in completely the wrong place, so we'll put a bit of a fist on red on there. And then I'll hold it out of line of sight so you can't see that. And once you've done that, you want to go on blotting on those individual leaves. I'll do a quick tutorial on how to do that in the next week or so. I'm going to use Vallejo White once more. We're going to draw a shield shape on the hip plate here. This is doing the Crusade badge that they all seem to have somewhere on them. This is a simple way of doing it. it may not be 100% accurate but it does look ace once it's finished and is a very easy way of doing it. Like so. So next we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Avalon Sunset. This is going to be to do the diagonal stripe going top right to bottom left. Now when doing this, what I tend to do is, there's actually a red stripe in the middle of this yellow one, so rather than doing the red and trying to do the yellow either side, do the yellow first, going straight across, and get a thinner brush, get some of the fist on red, and just draw a line straight through the middle of that yellow one. Now you can see that I've overshot the shield here. That's intentional because it means that you can start dragging the colour before you get to it, so you don't have to worry about maybe leaving a little bit of white around the edges that you've then got to touch up or anything like that. You can just get that colour straight across. You can see at the far side there, there's a little bit of the red that I have to then touch up. So now we're using Vallejo Black, and this is to do the tiny little Templar symbol, just on the top left there. That doesn't have to be perfect, it's only about a mil across, maybe a little tiny bit more, one and a half mil, something like that. So it doesn't have to be perfect, as long as you've got that cross shape and you can see what it is, that's fine. I'm going to use a little bit of white, and the white here is to do the chain links going through the centre of the red stripe so all I do is you find out how many links you can see in it put a little elongated blob for each one of those so on this one it has four so you're putting four of these little white splodges on there once you've got those into the right place you want to do a really thin line between each one then we're going to use a tiny spot of my fist on red in each and you're just going to put that tiny little spot in the center of each blob and that will give you the open link that you can see. So now that we've done that, we are going on to the rosary. We're putting a little spot of Gene Steeler purple on the top right of each of those purple coloured beads that we used the Shaiish purple on earlier on. We are then going to use a tiny spot of Vallejo white in the centre of that Gene Steeler purple bit. There's like a little bit of a highlight 
where light's catching them because you want them to look shiny. Unfortunately, this is slightly off camera. Move that back into place there. You just want to put that tiny little spot on there. And once you've sprayed it with your matte varnish, you want to go over these little rosary sections with shiny varnish. And that'll give you that nice shine for each of those little stones. So this is the finished Emperor's Champion. Really pleased with how it turned out. It's an absolutely cracking model, loads of great details on it, and a lot of fun to paint. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media, link below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content, please consider supporting us through our coffee and Patreon pages, links below. Thanks very much.